this feast that we're celebrating this morning is fundamental to our faith. It's the very base on which our faith is built. We are celebrating the feast of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Every time we begin a prayer as Christians, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our greatest prayer, the Eucharist, is a prayer directed to the Father, through the Son, in the Holy Spirit. In our baptism, we received the Holy Spirit, but we didn't just receive the Holy Spirit, we received the Father and the Son as well. And it is the Holy Trinity who dwells within us. Over the years, over the last 2,000 years, theologians and doctors of the church have tried to explain the Trinity using all sorts of images, metaphors, etc. And all of them have fallen short of the full description because the Holy Trinity is the mystery. We can look at it and we can know something about it but we'll never get to its depth. And here's me going to speak a little bit about it and I'm going to get nowhere near that mystery nor I'm sure anywhere near as good as some of the theologians of past and present have spoken. One of the terms that's used uh, often these days to describe uh, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit is the Creator, the Redeemer and the Sanctifier. You've heard these terms before? Creator, Redeemer, Sanctifier. And we see uh, a little bit of that in the first reading this morning. We have the, we hear wisdom being there at creation, being there actually before creation, but taking part in the work of creation, the Father's work of creation. And wisdom is, is often uh, identified with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who is very much, it's, it's with the Spirit's power that God creates. And when we start speaking about creation to people, uh, they look at the book of Genesis and they see seven days and they're saying, how is this possible? How did God do this? Is, is it seven days of 24? What about evolution? What about the Big Bang? And they start asking all these how questions, how God did it. But the reality is that the writers of the book of Genesis weren't really concerned with the how. They were more concerned about the why. Why did God do this? Another way of describing God, the Trinity, is the lover, the beloved, and the love, who is a person in himself. Lover, beloved, and love. And we get this because St. John in one of his letters tells us God is love. So when we ask the question, why creation? The answer is because God is love. If we ever want to know why God does something, the root of the answer will be God is always. Everything he does is because God is, God is, thank you, okay. Let's describe why God creates. If we think about the Father, we know that the Father is infinite, perfect, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-seeing, all ever, present everywhere, omnipresent. And when God, <clears throat> a way of, a way of thinking the Trinity, when God thinks about himself, when God uh, contemplates himself, he sees himself perfectly as he is. 
He has an image of himself which is complete and perfect as he is complete and perfect. That image is the Son, that perfect image of God. Already we, we hear scripture saying that Jesus is the image of, of the Father. Jesus said, whenever you, whenever, to see me is to see the Father, to hear me is to hear the Father, to know me is to know the Father. And so this image that God has of himself, this, this picture he has of himself, is the Son. Perfect, infinite, exactly, it will not, in, in, in all his, his powers as the Father. And the Father loves the Son. The Father loves this image perfectly and completely. And the Son loves the Father perfectly and completely. And they both pour out their love to one another, into one another, back and forth. And that love is perfect love. Perfect, complete, infinite. And it is the Holy Spirit. Something about this love though is this love is not insular, you know, it's, it's, it's not like a, a boyfriend and a girlfriend when they first meet and it's all kawaii, you know, like, ooh, you know, just, just me and you, you know, and forget the world, it's just the two of us, you know, and that's all, that's all that counts, you know. This is not the way God's love works, okay. When God, love is inclusive, love uh, uh, draws people in, love seeks to be loved. And love seeks things to love. So why did God create? Because he created so that he could love. He created the angels so he could love them. He created the universe to give us somewhere to live so that he could love us. That's why he created us. He created you so that he could love you. God is love. That means he doesn't do anything else but love. God is not capable of doing anything else but loving. He doesn't do anger or hate. He does love. And if you think you're not loved, well, that's your own thought. Because the reality is that you are loved. Whatever you think, that's the reality. You're loved perfectly, completely, infinitely by God. You're here so that you could, that he could love you, and that you could experience his love. Uh, just another way of thinking about it. Um, it's really good that you're here. Uh, I'm good. When a couple are in love, they love each other, you know, to bits. And then when they have a child, like this lady has a child here, is their love still just, just the two of us? And forget the child. The child's here, but that's okay, but it's just the two of us. Is it like that? No, they still love each other to bits, but there's this wonderful child that they just pour their love into. This new addition to their family, and it's just the best thing since sliced bread. And there's the real joy of being able to love each other and love this child as well. This is what God does. He, we're the addition to his family in Jesus Christ. In Jesus, we become this child who enters into this family of love. And God is inviting each of us into this family, into this relationship of love. That's, that he, that's what he's about, you know? He pours out his love to us. He's just this, this fountain of love that's continuously gushing out. St. Paul in, in his letter says the love of God has been poured into our heart by the Holy Spirit and this love is being poured into our hearts not just to stay there but it draws us back into the relationship with this Father into the Father that's what God is doing that's that's why we're here to experience that is that nice? Is that a pleasant thought? Is it nice to know this? Yes? When Jesus came, as I said before, he came to show us the love of the Father. Because we couldn't see him, but we could see Jesus. And he spoke and he acted and he revealed this is what God's love is like. 
we still can't see the Father. We can no longer see the Son. So how are we going to, how are people going to experience the love of the Father? How are people going to experience the love of the Father? How are people going to be drawn into that love? The church is the body of the Christ, or body of Christ. It's you. As the Father seeks to draw us into himself, we, you, should be seeking to draw other people into this community of love as well. This is part of our job. This is, we're to reflect the love of the Father, the love of the Trinity. You, our role as Christians, your role as members of this church, is to reflect the love of God I've just spoken about. To reflect it in your words and in your actions. What you do here and at home is to, should be imaging, reflecting what God is doing, drawing others into himself. How are you doing that? How are you doing that? It's worth reflecting on. And perhaps we should be thinking, of how, what am I going to do, in this place especially, to reflect what God does with me? It will need a change in the way I behave and the change in the way I speak in this church and outside.